fabulous. Love how you do it. <laughs> fabulous. Fabulous blue bombers. Fabulous. Fabulous. The Fabulous Blue Bomber Show. On Shaw TV, brought to you by Moxie's. Now here are your hosts, Kim Babbage and Brody Jackson. Not only is Brody Jackson co-hosting this week's edition of the Fabulous Blue Bomber Show here on Shaw TV, he is acting as a windshield for me. Hi, everybody. I'm Kim Babbage, rocking Rudy Gowers on camera. Windiest day so far this year at Canada and Stadium, bar none. I think it's gusting to 70 today. Yeah, actually, this this is also an addition for the team, just in case they need a wind blocker for any of the punts oh. or anything. This is what I'm going to be doing oh, this, on the field. It's crazy. This is why Canada and Stadium has the reputation of being the hardest place to play <laughs> and the hardest place to kick in the league. My hair will be in front of my face the rest of the show, by the way. <laughs> Um, is because of this wind and you can I don't know if you can see behind us but guys have already pulled out the toques and the long sleeves and stuff it's not cold out it's just really windy welcome to September welcome to Manitoba yeah. football for anybody who has never especially for any of the players who haven't like we'll Been be here? talking to Damon Washington a little bit later yeah this is his first year in Winnipeg. He's probably going to come into the this winter going, oh, what? Yeah, the, no. the swirling winds in here. <laughs> I mean, it's windy in the city, but it's really, really windy in here. Nice New Jersey, by the way. Well, thank you. Thank you to all the Let's fine folks in the store who helped me out, too, in picking it. Give us a spin it. around. Okay, done. Got the Jackson on the back. See, I saw seven from the front, and I assumed you had gotten a Westwood jersey. Well, <laughs> no, I actually went. The seven is is a, an old school number of mine that I've, I used to follow Gary Roberts. Okay. Like religiously as a hockey player, so uh, I went with the number seven and Very decided nice. to get his that. Everyone's going like uh, Paris Jackson doesn't play on the team. <laughs> you know, I I've been getting a lot of those actually, and I'm like, it's Brody Jackson. Well, I understand. See, I would have thought Westwood, like, you know, a good vintage jersey. If you're going to get a jersey these days, you can always bet on a Doug Brown, a Milt Stiegel, a Troy oh. Westwood, you know, a Chris Walby. You get the vintage. Those will never go out of style because you never really can tell about picking a current number. It's risky. It can be risky. <laughs> it's true. It really can be. But you mentioned the Stiegel. I saw a ton of these jerseys the other day yeah. with Stiegels on them on the Sunday. There's oh, so many of them yeah, out there. Yeah, no doubt so. about it. Fair enough. You got a, you got your favorite player. You might as well put him on the jersey. I'm gonna like seriously. I'm gonna blow away here. Sorry if you can't see my face for the rest of the day, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Cousin Ed over here. That's right. Uh, well, we do have a great show coming up. We're trying to shake off the Banjo Bowl. Although, despite the results of the game, two Blue Bombers were named Player of the Week. You mentioned him on Washington and Jason Vega as well. He had a huge game. So, despite the loss, actually there were some positives to take out of the Banjo Bowl including, by the way, the Banjo Bowl song, which you will have seen last <laughs> week on the show, and 10,000, 10,000 people saw that on the web. Uh, it went viral, it was all over the place. I mean, it's that good that you're still giggling, but congratulations to Brahms and Jay and Rudy, uh, who produced that video. I, I'm so proud of them and so excited at how big that song got. Isn't it, isn't it funny that we, that we love seeing something go viral, especially oh, yeah. when we know the people that did it, and they deserve this. I mean, they, they worked hard on it and they oh, made it, yeah. and it was hilarious. It was hilarious. <laughs> uh, you'll have to check out YouTube if you want to see that video, folks. Uh, it's called the Banjo Bowl Song, Jay Williams, Brahms, and Rudy. All right, well, we've got some stuff to get to. Uh, let's take a quick look at Twitter. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Maybe you need to be on the other side, though. The wind's going this way. Oh, this isn't helping at <laughs> yeah, all. Exactly. Just, I failed my addition. Just standing there like an idiot. That's <laughs> my all. My tryout's done. <laughs> all right, so we're going to take a look at Twitter. So first one we got here was posted by Sveti, Chris Svetkovic, and he says, shout out to Desiree Scott. Great meeting you, and thanks for a picture with my son. Just goes to show you that even your favorite Blue Bombers have uh, people that they are fans of and want to get pictures with as well. And Desiree Scott, Awesome, awesome girl. Not only is she like a beautiful lady, but I've been told that just anybody who's talked to her, she is a very beautiful lady inside well, too, like their personality. Yeah, she popped into Shaw with her medal and we got a chance to hold it and touch it and stuff. And she was fantastic. And those medals are heavy. You gave it back, right? I did give it you. back. But can I tell you something? I was on vacation and I didn't actually get to see the Banjo Bowl on television. Just listen to it on the radio as we were driving back from Alberta. I had a chance to meet Rosie McLennan, Canada's only gold medalist from London 2012 and got a picture with her, which was pretty exciting. And that medal also very heavy. <laughs> Did you uh, do the trampoline against her? You I should didn't have done. No, I did not. Actually. Kim's doing bum drops yeah. on the side or the other side. It would side. be a colossal <laughs> disaster. All right, so Chris Matthews with our next tweet, eating right, and he's got a little bowl of edamame. I'm going to say that a guy his size and his speed probably needs to fuel up on a little bit more than soybeans. But you know what? These beans are awesome. They are like a, a, an energy. I swear. <laughs> You're I so swear. excited. They're so, I everybody, love, they're awesome. <laughs> I love edamame beans. No, they're really. They're very tasty, Like if yes. you grab, like, if you're a peanut eater uh -huh. uh, and, and you're worried about, like, all the salt intake and the calorie intake, you grab some edamame beans and you'll be in heaven with those things. Just steam them or microwave them and you're set. Snacking tips 
from Brody Jackson. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> All right. How to open a box of cereal by Brody Jackson. Uh, Clarence Denmark tweets that awkward moment when you double tap trying to zoom in on a picture on Instagram and accidentally like it. We have all done this. <laughs> which, I, which was the picture he liked? Oh, but just he's just making the comment. Oh, OK. Fair yeah. And oh, OK. I accidentally following someone on Twitter, you know, the whole, whole nine yards there. Uh, Terrell Parker with some wisdom. It is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you. That is, I suppose, a response to the banjo ball and some of the uh, hate being spewed at the Bombers on Twitter and on social media and everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the negative thing about the social media. Is yeah. It's so quick to uh, jump on your emotions. So mm -hmm. as we do that as fans, we got to be careful because you, you might want to you might end up regretting yeah. what you said a day before, especially when you know that the players can read it and see it. They're human oh, beings yeah. too. You well, know? and you know, you're trying to support the team and then you're mm -hmm. going ahead and rattling the guys. You're just getting mean things thrown at you all day long. It's not very nice but at the same time uh, you do have to as a person just learn to ignore it as Terrell says and so our final tweet from our good buddy Chris Garrett who is always entertaining on Twitter uh, they got some booster juice I take it in the locker room and uh, it's nice to see Chris with his jersey on and his hair is getting higher every day and Alex Super looks pretty happy in the background there is he literally sideways like is yeah. he horizontal on that one yeah I think he's laying on the table <laughs> is there somebody lifting him up yeah. that's great I like that his hair is gonna knock over the box <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right so that's a look at Twitter for those of you who, those of you who don't follow Follow any of the Blue Bombers on social media, or maybe you're just not on social media. Um, so this week, we're actually going to take a look back at something we showed you in the past. And uh, our good friend Sarah Orleski, very good friend of mine and good friend of the show, um, she is the host, of course, of many of our CFL games on TSN. And Sarah uh, gave us a look at sort of the inside, behind the scenes of the broadcast. It takes a lot to put a CFL game on TSN, and Sarah is giving it a look, giving us a look at how they do it. <laughs> I'm Sarah Orleski with TSN Friday Night Football. I do the sidelines for them, and we're about to give you a behind the scenes look on how it all comes together. For me personally, with preparation, uh, I try to keep up on everything throughout the week to try to make it a little bit easier as possible. Talk to players and then also make sure that you're caught up on all the games that the teams have played. So if this is their first meeting, I may go back to previous years. It's a lot of prep work and doing a couple of games each week makes it that much more challenging because you've really got to be a, a master of time management. This is up here in the booth where all of the magic happens. Tonight it's Rod Black and Dwayne Ford here in town. This will be where Rod is this is Dwayne they're down on the field right now doing something for a pregame special that they have you can see them right down in here also back here you'll find the green screen which is where the guys will stand up when you see them do their on cameras at the half or at the end of each quarter are guys who have owned their craft in the CFL this is one of the top pairings of the CFL on TS, and if not... Wait a second, there's only two. There's only two of them. <laughs> it's good to be one of the top yeah, ones, though. It would feel very special. Don't you have a street here? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I did it myself, as a matter of fact. In Transcona, Manitoba. I still don't know what's for pregame mail tonight, though, and I'm very concerned about that. The, these are the priorities that we deal with right before kickoff. What is Dwayne going to eat? Because anybody that has worked alongside Dwayne knows that that is always a hot topic of conversation and the man must be fed and well fed if he's going to do this game. Priority one, what do you eat before the game? Priority two, what are you going to eat after the game? The man is helping every beef marketer across Canada pay their mortgage. During the game, I'm down I'm giving updates as to injuries that are going on, different things that are happening on the sidelines, trying to really communicate a mood is to give people a sense as if they were down on the sideline, what's going on. Well, Rod, I am down here with defensive tackle Doug Brown right now. Doug, it seemed like a very different group in this second half, that defensive line in particular. What have you seen from here on the sideline? And otherwise, also tell stories. Let people, give people an idea of what's going on with either the players or the teams. Different, we've got so many great personalities within this league and so many great stories to be told, so we try to do a combination of them. These guys are getting after it on their inspired group and they're really causing fits for the Eskimos right now so it's a pleasure to watch. This guy's got to work here. We got to go to work too. So do you. Try to look out for that football tonight. Nice seeing you Winnipeg. One minute with brought to you by Winnipeg U-Drive and Payless Car Rental. One minute with Devon Washington.
you, uh, you, I mean, you've been talking about this wind. We were talking off camera about the wind and how crazy it is. Yeah. You've never seen anything like this. Never, never in my life. Now you've won the workhorse of the week before, so you've been uh, with, with Shaw, and we've been on the show, the Fabulous Blue Bomber Show, but you've never had the opportunity to get to know, like us to get to know you. So we're gonna ask you some questions. You cool with that? Yeah, I'm cool with that. Okay, so the first one I've always wanted to know, pump up tune. What gets you going before the, the game? I set my, um, my phone on Yo God and I just let it play on out. So that's on repeat? It's on repeat. And Yo you God. sing along with it? All the time. You wanna, <laughs> do you want us to give a little snippet right now? I won't. <laughs> Maybe next time. Next time, I got you. Next now you time. mentioned you're not too excited about uh, snow, about winter. But if if you could do a, a sport outdoor in the snow, would you give skiing or snowboarding a try? I would. I mean, I like. I don't know. I try anything once, twice if I like it. So uh, I'm more than, more than excited about. I, I want to try that once. Now we've noticed, we've all got to see how fast you are. Man, you fly everywhere. Like two punt return touchdowns already. Uh, can you, is there somebody on the team that's faster than you? Nobody. Not one? <laughs> Not one. Okay, is there somebody on the team that's, that's slower than you? Who's the slowest person on the team? Slowest. Come on, I can't say who the slowest. I can't slow, but if everyone race, I think everybody lose to me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try and organize it and make yeah, it happen, man. Make it happen. Now you get stuck one week with uh, an entire week with one kind of food. What, what would that be? Uh, chicken alfredo, pasta, the pasta. Same, same thing every day same would be thing. cool. Add a little shrimp to it every now and then. <laughs> Your go-to thirst quencher? Uh, power weight. That's my, that's my hangover drink, man. <laughs> what color? Uh, orange. That's, uh, that's orange. also my color <laughs> hangover drink. Weird how it works that way. All right, last question for you. Uh, genie pops out of a football right now. Uh, what would you say from that genie? What do you want? What's your one wish? Uh, Give me magic powers. <laughs> like superpowers? Power. Yeah, superpowers. I want some powers. What, what would be the go-to superpower then? Uh, I'd like to disappear. <laughs> and reappear again, and I reappear, hope. Reappear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, we'll let you disappear again right now, man. Right, thanks, Congrats. Man. Thanks a lot for sticking right. around. All right, thank you. <laughs> One Minute With, brought to you by Winnipeg U-Drive and Payless Car Rental. Hi, I'm Mitch Kersner, and I'm a producer of the CFL on TSN. In the truck, there's probably, during a game, 10 to 12 people, and then you have seven or eight cameramen, engineers, audio assistants, television assistants. Yeah, it adds up to, quickly adds up to about 25 or 30. It gets busy, but when you've done it for a while, it's not as hectic as it seems because everyone knows what they're supposed to do. As a national network, everyone here has been doing it for a long time. Let's see, gotta see the penalty. There's a second one. The second one that I saw in yellow right at the end when he pushed the roll yellow for me. I guess in a football game or a hockey game, the busiest time is when there's a review situation because you understand that now you're actually part of the game. You're making, you're showing the officials what they need to see to make a decision that will impact the outcome of the game. So that's usually the most, I would like to say, I wouldn't say hectic, but the most busy when you know that what you're doing can impact on the game. Thanks, Craig. That's fine, it's declined. The second one's against Winnipeg. Winnipeg, 10 yards from the point of the foul. The officials and fans are seeing the same video that we're putting out of the truck here. So they watch it and they evaluate the play on its merits on what we show them. I like when it's a close game late in the game and, and you know that the game means something. When you grow up, you're a kid watching a hockey or a football game and you set your day around. I know I did, I was a big sports fan, watching, or I'm gonna go home tonight, I'm gonna watch a hockey game. And there's a lot of people out there watching and you hope that you can present them the best game that you possibly can and that it's a close game coming down to the end and it means something. The fabulous Blue Bomber Show steps up to the post. And at the 40, at the 30, at the 20, at the 10, it's a photo finish. That's your Assiniboia Downs Workhorse of the Week. I tell you what, uh, the workhorse of the week seems to cause controversy every week because you're trying to twist the rules, you want to give it to yourself, you want to give it back to the guys who have already won, you can't do that. I think the person who wins it should modify the rules. Well, that's ridiculous. Why? <laughs>
Why? Because yes. that's what rules are. Rules are for Meant to having... be broken, you're right. Uh, well, Kenny Maynard, the man getting the workhorse this week who is standing on this side of me, he deserves it. Tell us why you picked him. Well, <laughs> Kenny needs the, a moment, you see. He was just running the infamous I, gassers, and he is indeed gassed. I think I picked him because the league picked him, that's all. That's really not, I mean, I know you kind of want to keep this within the defense, which is Terrence Edwards was complaining about a moment ago, but I mean, he does kind of deserve it, being that he's a defensive player of the week in the entire league. You think so, really? I do. I do you feel know, that way. You know what's going on here? Um, he's just so hurt about not being able to nominate himself that uh, he doesn't have an option for anyone else. That's, a, yeah, that's right. a good point. I mean, he may be right, but honestly, he did have a pretty good game. And I, I would call six tackles and three sacks a pretty good game. It's pretty good. It's and he also had a pretty decent solo. It wasn't quite as good as mine. But he played his banjo, so he deserves the award. All right. He deserves it. Well, you can hand the award over. You can give him the horse, and wait, I will wait. give him the Moxie's wait, card. Wait, wait. Can I give him the horse and you give me the gift card? Uh, well, no, no, he does, We're, get both. <laughs> he does get both. And he also gets to give a shout out to whoever he would like out in the world. So Jason, here's your moment. Oh yeah. Happy birthday to my brother. Yesterday, that's belated, but I said it anyway. Say hi to my mom, my family, my little girl. She doesn't know I'm on TV, but she'll know in a few years. Awesome, Jason, thank you. So you are up to pick the workhorse next week. And uh, again, you can't pick Kenny and you can't pick yourself and you can't pick anybody who's already won, which is kind of starting to limit it now that we're getting well into the season. But I know, I have faith in you. I know you will get this right. Can we start talking about modifying the rules? We may have to. So <laughs> maybe Alex Hall can win it next week. If Alex Hall deserves it. But he he's could win it. won it before. Well, we'll talk about modifying the rules. I'm just saying, you like he, the person who wins it has to deserve it. It's really the main criteria. Got I'll, that? I'll work on that. You work on that. Right. So Jason wait. Vega, workhorse of the week. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So we can modify the rules if the person deserves it. Well, I said we'll work on that. We'll talk about it. You know, it's not etched in stone just because we're on camera. Your, your, you being indecisive is also on camera too. <laughs> Well, it's getting late in the year though, right? And a lot of guys have already won. So now I can't limit like everybody. You gotta, somebody's gotta deserve it. And maybe if he's already won it and absolutely does deserve it, he could win it again. We could talk about this. See you next week then. <laughs> the Workhorse of the Week is brought to you by Assiniboia Downs. Open year round for horse racing, gaming, and dining. Go to asdowns.com for more information. <laughs> Hello, people of Winnipeg. I'm Glenn, and with me as always, my good friend Steve. How y'all doing? This week on Living Large, we're at BDI, home of the world famous Goog. You excited? We're ready to get some ice cream, buddy, are you? I know I am. All right, let's do this. Well, a Goog comes in a cup, and it has a blueberry thick shake on the bottom, yeah. and then it has banana slices on top of that, with a hot fudge sundae, nuts, whipped cream, and a cherry, and you get a straw and a spoon to eat it with. Sounds pretty good. Sounds good, Seamus. Seamus, I got uh, one more question for you. What makes your milkshakes the creamiest in town? Oh, oh that's a trade secret. Oh, I bet. Obviously, the first step, you need a cup. Yep, grab a small cup. Some blueberry. Yeah. <laughs> the, like the original group's with blueberry, but you can get any of these flavors here. You can get, often, people like strawberry. Strawberry. Whatever Seamus says, Seamus goes. I'm going to call it strawberry. But I want strawberry. You're, you have blueberry there. That's fine, I'll do blueberry. Where's strawberry at here, Seamus? Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. That should be good. Then I'll fill your cup halfway with ice cream. Okay. It comes out like a rocket. I'm not a big sweets guy, believe it or not, so. <laughs> Thanks, Rudy. Try to twist or no? Vanilla. Okay, sorry. Time to tell you when. Watch your calories. Oh, you want Seamus? That should be good. Okay. And then you come over to these machines here. Okay. Oh, goodness. Let's bring her up and down, turn around. That's what she said. Right, so just do the pedal here. Yep. Stick it in. Oh, Glenn's a natural. He uh, definitely showed me some uh, moves in there, and uh, he has some good uh, ice cream making Whoa. abilities, that's for sure. Hardcore goog action. So what's next? We need to cut up some bananas? Yeah. 
Are these bananas uh, grown here in the BDI or they flown in? Okay. Local farmers. Oh, chocolate sauce. Chocolate? It's gonna freeze or? It's gonna harden? Yeah, is, it, is it like magic shell or no? Nope. Oh, okay. It just stays nice and hot. Okay, perfect. A lot more cost effective. Dad, do you guys want nuts on it? Yes, please. What about some whipped cream? Yeah, that comes Of right course out. it does. You want me to nut your, uh, your goog? Oh, yeah. Whipped cream. Circular motion. Can we get yours? A little bit, yeah, just a little bit. Oh. Taste time. I've seen the goog, but I've always been kind of scared to try it. But now that I've had hands-on goog experience, I feel comfortable ordering it in the future. If the glove doesn't fit, oh, oh. you can't yeah, eat it. It's good to go here. <laughs> well, now I'm going to show you how to make the Sleeping Beauty. It is our most renowned specialty. Oh, wow, Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. Well, <laughs> got a nice empty shell there. Oh, okay. Make this one. OK, sure, yeah, thanks. Two Sundays. Two Sundays. Put one scoop of that on top of one Sunday, one scoop of the strawberry. Okay, perfect. Uh, the glove make it a little slippery, a little slick. There we go. It's kind of as your, you know, you know your, the healthy stuff. It's a lot of fruit, a lot of fruit. Just start shoving that pineapple wherever you can find room, Steve. Smash the oh, Sunday? You won't be seeing the Sunday because you got to cover everything. With oh, cream really? After. That's why it's called a sleeping beauty. Is she sleeping yet? She's uh, definitely drowsy. She's almost sedated. <laughs> it's a little tough with these gloves on. Want to give me a hand? You know what I know. Oh, look at that. <laughs> she's sleeping now. There it is. Sleeping beauty, folks. Look at my shirt. Only at BDI. 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 Let's taste it. Just don't wake her up. Don't wake her up. Ready? Go. No. And I don't care what those guys say. My Sleeping Beauty doesn't have pineapples on top of it. It has a cowboy hat. Well, buddy, another one in the bag. Once again, we lived large. Feeling full, feeling good. Special thanks to Seamus and special thanks to BDI and Roger. We'll see you next time, Winnipeg. <laughs> I'm doing it right. You know what? I think the wind has changed because now the hair is blowing this way and you're still no help. <laughs> I cannot figure this out at all. I'm stuck at this job. You know, despite how windy it is, I could sure use a goog after watching Glenn and Steve in the kitchen of the BDI making ice cream. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. I love ice cream at any point in time, man. Even in the winter, ice cream. I hope the new stadium has some good, like, I, they've said that they're going to have some really good new uh, concessions and stuff. So there's yeah, going to yeah, be some yeah. really great new food choices. And I hope that good ice cream is one of them. Maybe some gelato. I would love that. That would be fantastic. Fantastic. Hmm, this is the new gelato show here weekly on the Shaw TV. <laughs> Investors Group Field, take note, we want ice cream. That's what we're asking for. All right, uh, so we do have to do our weekly giveaway, and uh, we're going to do our trivia as always. If you know the answer, you can send us the answer on Twitter at FBBSWPG. You can email us at fabulousbluebombershow at shaw.ca or post up the answer on our Facebook page. And if you've won, we'll let you know, uh, and you will win a gift card to the bomber store. So, Brody, what is this week's question? Oh, what's the name of the girl that I did not drop? last week <laughs> the cheerleader that is yes <laughs> there was a few other ones that i didn't know wah, that I, wah. Ah, yeah no the cheerleader from the <laughs> from the blue bombers cheer team who did i not drop and jay didn't drop her either too that's actually, right so thank that's goodness good. thank goodness they were doing a lawsuit on their hands uh folks listen we're going to extend the photobomb contest one extra week um just because of circumstances that are surrounding the team we want to get people uh, pumped up and enthused again and um i feel like after the we had enough time go past since the Labor Day Classic that maybe people are feeling hopefully a little bit better about things. Uh, so we want you to take a photo, Photoshop it, make it bomber themed, make it awesome, um, and send it in to us and then we'll have that as well as there's some leftover other photobomb photos that people uh, sent in to us before the Labor Day Classic. So we've got those waiting in the queue as well. We'll get back to regular photobomb shortly, but if uh, you've got those, send those to the places that we've mentioned earlier, FBBSWPG on Twitter, uh, Facebook, or email us. And if you've won, we will let you know, but we're gonna show those next week. So it's we've got some, we've got about four fantastic ones waiting to, you, like you haven't seen them yet, I have. No, I haven't seen them. Awesome. I can't wait to show them. They're very, very good. Yes. Are we in any of them? 
We are not in uh, any of them. I didn't think so. Ooh, maybe if someone wants to put us in one. Yeah, yeah. As photo, long as it's tasteful. Photo bomb some abs on me. And as me. long as I look really thin. I would thin. love some abs. If you do. And you want thin? You, you, you thin and abs, me thin. Yeah, okay. Do you want abs too? I don't, uh, I'll be covered. Okay, you don't worry about her getting abs. <laughs> That's cool. All right, folks, the Bombers take on Calgary this weekend. Make sure you cheer them on because we want to have a good week back here the following week at Canada in Stadium. Make sure you tune us in. Uh, you can check us out on video on demand all across Canada on the Shot Network. And uh, you can tune him in on QX104 every morning. So with that said, we will see you back here next week. Thanks for watching. The Fabulous Blue Bombers Show on Shaw TV. To see past episodes or contact the show, visit us online at shaw.ca slash FBBS. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or email us at fabulousbluebombershow at shaw.ca. are their weapons. Home by discipline. Poised for contest. Poised for victory. But invincibility lies not in attack. Invincibility lies in defense. A warrior would be nothing without his armor. His armor protects him. Yet, not only his body, the armor protects his heart. The armor protects his spirit. Whether forged for his forefathers or his allies of today, the armor assures defense so that the warrior is free to win the day. They are warriors, fighting for their team, fighting for their fans, fighting for their honor. Every warrior needs his armor, his shield, and on that shield, his banner. Presenting the new logo of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Celebrating our proud past. Looking forward to our bright future.